Right, so round two of uh, refutation trees today we'll talk about the tree rules for the conditional and the negated conditional. Okay, so so far uh, you've, we've learned uh, the rules for double negation, for disjunction, for conjunction, for negated disjunction and for negated conjunction. So now we'll learn the rules for the conditional. Before moving on, we'll go ahead and introduce one little uh, new symbol. It's called the double, double turn style. It looks like this. It just points in both directions. And its purpose is just to indicate uh, logical equivalence when two, two or more formulas are logically equivalent. So this says uh, not not a is logically equivalent to a, uh, which just means that uh, you can derive a from not not a and vice versa. Similarly here and here. Okay, so the rule for the conditional is based on this equivalence. If A then B is if A then B is logically equivalent to not A, not A, or B. Now we, we actually discussed this in uh, when we were talking about truth tables. So you could just sort of think back through it a little bit. If you say if A then B well, that means that either you don't have A or you do, in which case you have B. So if A then B means either not A or B. And since the or is, uh, well, the or is a disjunction, we know that we can just use the branching rule for that. So because of this equivalence, we, whenever we encounter a conditional, when we're making refutation rules, we write it like this. So if A then B, not A, or B, and check. All right, negated conditional is based on this equivalence, which we have not really talked about before. It's not the case that if A then B is logically equivalent to a and not B. Most people struggle with this one a little bit intuitively and it's understandable. I think the best way to make this uh, intuitive is to think like this. Consider, consider what we mean when we say that if A then B is false. Now remember, if we say if A then B is false, that just means that it's not the case that if A then B is true, right? So if we say that if A then B is false, what we're saying is, um, well, you can have A and not B, right? So if somebody says, if A then B, and you say, nah, what are you saying? You're saying it's possible to have A and not B. Okay, that actually is, I think, the best way of intuitively grasping that. It doesn't, in any sense, prove the equivalence. Uh, to do that, you need a truth table or some other proof system, and we're not going to worry too much about that now. You do have to memorize. You need to memorize all these things, of course. That's the most important thing um, for us as far as getting, uh, getting good at doing these truth trees. But th these two formulas are logically equivalent. And, uh, and later on, when we do... Uh, natural deduction will make a point of proving that. Okay, so anyway, because of this equivalence, the refutation tree rule for not conditional is this, right? This, so this is an and. It converts into an and. So it's not the case that if A then B is logically equivalent to A and not B and dispatch. Now, point out that this 
this is a uh, this can kind of this is pretty simple to understand, but it can get kind of trippy when you're actually applying the rule, and specifically when there are negations involved in the formulas that you're um, applying the rule to. So, just to give you an example, suppose um, suppose you're applying the rule to a formula like this. It's not the case that not P then not Q. How are you going to um, how are you going to apply that? Well, what you have to understand is that remember over here we're working in the meta language. A refers to any formula, and B refers to any formula. So A here refers to all this, not P, right? And B here refers to all of this, not Q. So if you're going to apply negated conditional to this, what you have to think is, okay, it's not the case that if not P, then not Q, means A, which is not P, and not B. And not Q is B, so you have to write not, not Q, right? So you have to do this very mechanically. If you just sort of default to your intuitions, things things tend to get, well, they tend to get wrong, right? So remember that these are metaform, these are meta-linguistic expressions, they refer to entire formulas, and these negations are parts of the formula. And you don't want to be doing any uh, rules sort of um, implicitly, right? You This really means that you have to take this negation and attach it to the not Q, and you're going to end up with a not not Q. And if you're quick, you might say, well, not not Q and Q are the same thing. Well, that's true, they are, but you would need to apply, I forgot to uh, write the dispatch there, you would need to apply the double negation rule to get that. Okay? Yeah, it's going to trip you up, but this is, uh, at least you know how now. Okay, so let's do a couple more uh, uh, refutation tree proofs with uh, with these new rules. Uh, so here's the, some things for, to remember when we're doing them, and remind you again as well. So when testing for validity, be sure to negate the conclusion. Always got to do that. When you apply a rule, you can only apply it to a whole formula, not a part of a formula. And that's just another way of saying that you're always got to operate on the main operator. Uh, as a practical matter, you should always operate on non-branching rules first. Um, when you're uh, decomposing or working on a formula according to a tree rule, you have to do so on every open branch under the formula. So, for example, if there are four open branches under the formula, you have to put it under, you have to write that, the, uh, uh, the decomposition of that formula four times. And by the way, this is why we always try to apply non-branching non rules first to minimize the amount we do that. And then finally, once a contradiction appears on a branch, you can just close it off. You don't, you don't need to keep working on it. And that actually saves a lot of work. It's not wrong if you don't close it off right away. If you just happen to not see that there's a contradiction. But um, yeah, it's just it's just uh, good good to pay attention to that and and not make these things any larger than they have to be. Another uh, thing is uh, we're going to go ahead and um, I said this before in the first lecture on refutation uh, trees, but we're going to dispense with the book's use of line numbers and justifications. Line numbers on the left, justifications on the right. We do that assiduously when we get on to uh, 
natural deduction, but here we're going to treat uh, we're going to treat the uh, trees a little bit more informally and that's just basically because it, it really makes a mess. It's very hard after a while to keep track of lines and, and rules when you're doing trees. And there's actually most systems don't don't require you to do that. Okay, so here's an example. If P then Q, if P then Q, not R then Q, P or S entails yields uh, P and S. So what do we do first? Well, we line them up, right? You have to line them up just like that. And we're going to uh, negate the conclusion, which is what we did, right? Not P and S. It's not, so we had to slap those brackets back on, right? Because we're negating the conclusion, not negating the P. Okay. So we do non-branching rules first, and the, there's only uh, one non-branching rule here, which is it's not the case that if R then Q. So again, this has got to be from memory, but we're applying to this line right here, which we'll dispatch, right, R and not Q. So it's not the case that R then Q, is R and not Q. This batch. Okay. Now we look and we see we've got three more live lines. We've got if P then Q, P or S. And it's not the case that not P and S. And if you've begun to learn these rules, you'll know that all of these are branching. So in a sense, it doesn't matter which one you choose. Although you can get good at choosing, as it turns out, and you can start to see the ones that will generate contradictions and the ones that will, won't. Um, that's sort of a little bit more advanced, but you should try to see if you can kind of anticipate that a little bit. Okay, so we'll go ahead and choose um, if P then Q. So we'll dispatch that, and so we write not P or Q not P or Q, and th that's in accord, of course, with the, with the rule for if P then Q. And then we see immediately that Q contradicts not Q, right? So we can put an X right here. And now we don't have to work on this line anymore. It's done. It's a dead, it's a closed off line. So only all we have to do is grow this tree under not P now. So we could either do P or S, or we could do, it's not the case that not P and S. We'll do um, P or S. So we dispatch P or S. We've got P, S, and immediately again, we get a contradiction, P and not P. So we close this branch, and now all we have to do is work under S. That's the only one that's still alive. And we've only got one formula that's still alive as well. So it's not the case that not P and S, right? So that's a branching formula, which looks like this. So notice what we did here, right? We have not P, which is A, and S, which is B, right? And what we have to do is not the not P, which we did, not, not P. So we not the not P, and we also not the S, right? So not not P or not S, and not not P contradicts not P, right? Because you've got not P, and you've got a negation added to that, so these two are contradictory, and these two are contradictory. So all of the branches have closed, and this is a valid formula. We're done. Now, you could have, uh, we're done, no, this is it. But suppose you um, had not noticed the contradiction, and you, and you did notice that not not p was uh, that's right, that's a 
Um, that's not a negated formula. That's a that's not a negated atomic proposition. That's a double negated proposition. So what you could have done is said, oh, okay, I want to apply double negation to this. And so you could have written P underneath like that and by the double negation rule. And then you might have seen, it might have been more obvious to you that P contradicted not P. Notice how we follow this branch up, 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 right? So not P is contradicting P, but it also contradicted not P too. So we don't have to, um, we didn't have to do that, but either way would have been uh, permissible. All right, so we just proved that that's a valid argument. Yeah, so example two, we've got, uh, it's not the case that P or S and T, not P then S, if not P then S, if S then not R, and we're supposed to see if this implies if not P, then R. So again, we negate the conclusion. It's not the case that if not P, then R. And uh, look for a contra, look, look to see what happens, right? Apply the rules, very mechanical procedure. So again, there's only, uh, um, actually not only, there's two, there's two non-branching rules because we have it's uh, negated conditional here, which is non-branching, and we have negated disjunction, which is non-branching. So it's not the case that if not P, then R. Again, notice how this works, right? It's not the case that if not P, then R goes to A and not B. So not P is A, so we write not P, and not and B is R, so we write not B, so not R. Okay, so it's not P, not R. All right. Now, we have another non-branching rule, P or S and T, P or S and T. So that goes to not P and not all of S and T, right? And we dispatch that. Right? Now, we won't, all we've got left is two uh, other rules and they're both uh, branching rules, they're both conditionals. So just pick one. Uh, though, again, as I mentioned before, you can be judicious about how you pick them. So why did I pick uh, if, why did I pick if not P then S? Well, it was because I saw or thought I saw that since this goes to not not P, that I'm going to get at least one contradiction, right? So not P then S, right? Not P is A, S is B. So this goes to not not P or S, right? So not not P or S. And not not P, trace it all the way back up to not P, not 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 P is the negation of not P. So I can just close that off right now. And I now only have to work on the S. Right? You'll notice that I've got two, uh, two formulas actually to keep working on. I've got this one, but we also generated this one down below here too. So both of those are ultimately going to require our attention. Um, go ahead. You could have done either one. I'm going to go ahead and do not S, um, excuse me, if S then not R which goes to not S or not R. So not S contradicts S, but not R is still live, right? There's no R up here to contradict the not R. So that means we still have to do our last formula. Notice that if, if, if this were a contradiction here, if this had been a contradiction here, then we'd be done even though we haven't done all the formulas. 
you don't need to keep going if all of the branches close. If the branches closed, then are all if all the branches are closed, then you found contradictions in every branch and you're done. Okay, so we'll go ahead and finally operate on not s and not t. Excuse me, not s and t, and that gives you not s or not t. Well, not s contradicts s, which is great, but you've still got not t here and not t. There's no t up here, right? T. You, you might be tempted to say, well, t is right here. Now, this is a dispatched line. You were actually operating on that. You're done with it. And anyway, t isn't on a line by itself. The negation is the main operator here. So are we done now? Well, yeah, the only formulas that are live are atomic formulas or negated atomic formulas. So we are done. And since this is open, then this is an invalid statement. Okay, now I don't know what the experience of watching this was like, but if you were just sort of watching it the first time, that's fine. But now what you need to do is review this thing, go back to the very beginning. And even though you've seen these particular ones done, you need to go back to the beginning and see if you can generate the proofs for these. So every single step. Now you don't have to do them. In fact, it would be useful to do them in slightly different orders for practice, but you shouldn't say uh, that you're done with this video until you can really rip off these two proofs and really um, know what you're doing in, in each step. Okay, that's your task. You can't just sort of uh, watch these, watch me do them and, and think you've understood it. The test for understanding here is always, can you produce these yourself? And the first step is to be able to prove, is to reproduce the very ones that you've just seen done on your own. All right.